Welcome to our tutorial on the drum editor. The drum editor is used to edit drum and percussion MIDI tracks. On our first MIDI track, I've loaded the LM7 drum unit, and the generic MIDI map is assigned to this track. Select the MIDI part, select MIDI, open drum editor. Most tools and functions of the drum editor work the same way as in the key editor, which we discussed earlier on in our basic MIDI editing tutorial. However, here there are a few new tools, such as the mouse position display in the toolbar, From the Tool Buttons section, the Glue Gun and Split Tools are missing. Instead of a pencil, we see a drumstick. The notes are represented by diamonds, instead of rectangle symbols. The reason for this is that notes don't really have a length parameter here. Here there's an extra solo button which allows you to solo audition a particular instrument. The quantize function in the drum editor works in this way. If the snap button is active and the global quantize button right here is off, the notes will be quantized according to the quantize value in the quantize column of the drum sound list right here. If the global quantize and snap mode are active, the note quantization will be determined by the value chosen from this drop down menu regardless of the value here. To hear the drum sound, click in the first column or press the corresponding key on your input device. Copy, move, mute, delete. Adjustments for the controller's parameters functions. All of this works similar to the corresponding function in the key editor. From this drop down menu, you can choose different drum maps or set up a new one. Select your connections here. In my case, I've got the LM7 drum unit. This map is set up according to general MIDI standards, but the problem is some manufacturers have different default settings for MIDI surfaces and MIDI modules. So let's see how we can modify our drum map. As you already know, click on the first column. That's how you audition your instrument. In the pitch column, the value of the actual notes is recorded on the MIDI track. The value in this column cannot be changed. The instrument column contains the names of the instruments. You can double click and rename these instruments. The quantize column allows you to choose a quantize value for each instrument. The mute column is next. Input note. This contains notes assigned to your input MIDI device. For example, when you press C1 on your keyboard, it's going to trigger a bass drum sound. Let's say you want to assign the sound to the key F1. Now, when you press F1 on your keyboard, you're going to trigger the bass drum sound. The Note Out column contains the note which Cubase sends out once the sound has been played. Let me demonstrate this. I'm going back to my drum sound list.
I have LM7 and Hypersonic from Steinberg loaded right here. From this output drop down menu, I will choose LM7. LM7 has only one channel. For this reason, choosing a channel from this drop down menu will make no difference. This output I will send to Hypersonic and on channel 2 right here I've loaded a drum loops sound bank and this output goes to channel 10 of Hypersonic with the kicks and snares sound bank loaded. In the note out column let's change the value of all three notes to C1. Now, during playback, C1 is going to trigger the sound assigned to C1 on LM7. C sharp 1 will trigger the sound assigned to note C1 on channel 2 of the hypersonic. And D1 is going to trigger the sound assigned to C1 on channel 10 of the hypersonic. Let's go back to our drum map setup. On the bottom portion here, you can see a number of buttons. New map will create a blank new map. New copy will copy the selected map. Remove removes a selected map. Load will load a map from a file. Save will save a selected map to a separate file. Assign assigns a selected map to a selected MIDI track. And OK closes this window. This concludes our drum editor tutorial.